In this video of the Ultimate QPCR experiment series, the major sources of error and their circumvention are described. Subsampling error is a major source of error that occurs when working with very low abundant cDNA or genomic DNA samples. In this example, we have three technical replicates that contain a large amount of the target represented by these dashed lines in each of these tubes. So each of these tubes represents a technical replicate from the same biological sample pipetted into a qPCR plate. When there are a large number of target molecules contained in the technical replicates, the data in the, seek, in the amplification curves is very consistent. As we see here, all three amplification curves virtually overlap as would be expected with technical replicates. However, when the samples are much less abundant, as we see here from the dashed lines, where there are much fewer of these dashed lines for target molecules as there are in the upper part of the panel, the amount of target that is taken from each of these samples can vary dramatically. As we see here in this particular pipette tip, several target molecules were taken up in the pipette. However, in the second draw of the sample, less target molecules were taken. And in the, and in the third technical replicate, none of the target molecules were taken. And this is called subsampling error. So this is the error associated with taking a portion of the cDNA sample or genomic DNA sample that is being used for qPCR. So here we only took a sub portion of the sample, which because the DNA was so dispersed in the tube is based on the chance that in that subsample, there will be a consistent number of target molecules. And the consistency in the number of target molecules that will be taken up in a subsample dramatically decreases as the number of target mo molecules decreases in the sample. So in this particular case, as we see here, each of these technical replicates gave widely varying data where the first technical replicate, which had more target molecules in it, gave a lower CQ value than the second technical replicate. And in the third technical replicate, there was no amplification. In this panel, we show three dilutions of the same cDNA sample, where in, at each dilution, five technical replicates were taken. So five technical replicates in th this set of curves, this set of curves, and the last set of curves. In curves that come up typically below or around 30 cycles, the technical reproducibility remains quite consistent. However, as the curves go above 30 cycles where the copy numbers of target molecule are much lower in the sample, then the technical replicates start to spread apart. And finally, in, in the more extreme case where the replicates, where the sample has even less target molecule in, only two of the five amplified. And this is where we're in the realm of subsampling error. The only way to circumvent subsampling error is to take more of the sample. So instead of taking only three technical replicates, it's, it's important to take many more than just three, perhaps six or even eight or 10 technical replicates to achieve a larger sample of the original sample that's interrogated in qPCR. And then the average of all of the subsamples is taken to get the average CQ value, which would be more representative of the actual amount of DNA in the sample. Measurement uncertainty is another source of error in qPCR. 
And again, measurement uncertainty stems from having a low amount of target in a sample, where in this case, we have again three technical replicates that contain very few molecules of the target in, in the sample, consistent number, but low. In the first technical replicate, all of the target molecules, or virtually all of the target molecules, amplified in cycle one. But in the second technical replicate, a subset of the target molecules amplified in cycle one. And in the third technical replicate, an even smaller subset of target molecules amplified in cycle one. This is due to the random nature in which the reaction itself can occur. So in qPCR, the chance of a reaction going to endpoint and forming double-stranded DNA with cyber green intercalated is based on a probability ratio. And that probability ratio goes becomes much higher as you have more, more target in the original sample. And as you have less target, the odds of getting full amplification of all of the randomly dispersed targets actually decreases. So what we see in this particular circumstance, and this is measurement uncertainty, is that we get, in the end, if all target molecules amplify in, in cycle one in a technical replicate, there'll be a lower CQ than if less and less target molecules amplify where the CQ values shift higher. And again, in qPCR, the only way to circumvent this problem is to use more technical replicates when the CQ values are above 29 to 30 cycles, and then take the average CQ value of those replicates. A third major source of error in qPCR, and this is, this is a source of error that is um, consistent across all types of samples, whether they be abu highly abundant or low abundant, is pipetting error. When we pipette into a qPCR plate, it's important to create a master mix that contains water, the qPCR supermix, and primers. The qPCR supermix definitely plays a role in reproducibility, and using a good supermix definitely does help in producing better quality data. The supermixes from BioRad, the So Advanced Universal Cyber or So Fast Evergreen mixes, are optimized to produce quality data. From the three starting components, a master mix is created. And the master mix should be pipetted in approximately 60% of the total volume of the reaction mix in each well of a plate. So there's a ratio of 60% of the total volume to 40% of the genomic or cDNA samples. So for example, if 20 microliter reactions are used in qPCR, 12 microliters of each well would contain the master mix and eight microliters would contain the DNA sample for each of the triplicate technical replicates for each sample. So these represent sample one, sample two, sample three, and so on. By using this 60-40 ratio, it permits the user to always pipette with the same pipette. In this case, it would be a P20, where the volumes used for the master mix and cDNA or genomic DNA would be right in the middle of the precision of the pipette at 12 and eight microliters also permitting good mixing when those volumes are added into the wells and using the same pipette and the same tips to eliminate error. Of course, it's very important on a qPCR plate to pipette the no template control, which is the master mix with the same water that was used to dilute the master mix and the samples. And this is to assess contamination in the experiment. It's important to minimize technical variability. 
and include the controls by avoiding interplate variability and by avo to avoid interplate variability pipette all samples for a given target on a single 96 well or 3d4 well plate hence plates should be changed by gene by target and not between replicates so if i have a multi-plate experiment where i'm testing five targets i would ideally have five different plates one plate for each target containing all of the samples and the no template control for the experiment on each plate if the study does require a lot of samples or unpredictable sampling then an interplate calibrator is required on each plate to calibrate between the plates to assure more consistent data. As mentioned before, run no template controls for each primer on each plate and test no reverse transcription controls to assess genomic DNA contamination.